episode of Speaking of Saints on Rahai. Today we will celebrate the life of the youngest doctor of the church. And by doctor, the church refers to those saints whose teachings and insights have proven to be especially valuable. With all of one autobiography, few letters, some poems, and some plays, she has left us a teaching that is deceptively simple and so profound. So come join me as together we discover how did the little flower become a doctor of the church? Teresa's life is unique as it is, and it begins not just with her, but with her parents, incidentally both of whom are saints, canonized not very long ago, in October 2015 by Pope Francis. So the story begins with Louis Martin and Zelie, both of whom wanted to join the religious life, but for various reasons were rejected. Despite these rejections, God evidently had a beautiful plan for them because they gave the church five religious, one of whom was St. Therese. Born on the 2nd of January, 1873, Therese was the youngest of nine children, four of whom had died. She was born frail and her chances of survival were slim, and so she was sent to a wet nurse to be looked after. This was to be the first of many separations that Therese would have to face, even though she was well looked after by Rose. And after 15 months, Therese joined the Martin household, a healthy baby. But unfortunately for Therese, she couldn't really enjoy her mother's love, as she lost her when she was only four years old. This was to be a loss that would haunt Therese's life for years to come. A few years later, her older sister, Pauline, who was like a second mother to her, left for the Carmelite monastery. Therese found this loss too much to bear, and she took seriously ill. Experts have diagnosed her sickness as everything from a nervous breakdown to a kidney infection. She thought it was the devil. Whatever it was, doctors of her time could neither diagnose it or treat it. She suffered intensely at this point with headaches, insomnia, fits of fever, trembling and terrible hallucinations. It had been months and none of the treatment helped. Then on 13th of May 1883, Therese turned to the statue of Our Lady that was lying on the bed beside her and prayed for a cure. She saw Mother Mary smile at her and she was instantly cured. The statue has since been called Our Lady of Smile. This experience of a mother's love, which Therese received from Our Lady, was exactly what this little child needed. Therese had suffered the death of her mother and separation from mother figures repeatedly. However, the statue of Our Lady had always been there, and perhaps she had looked at it often enough. But this time, she turned to it and begged for a cure. The act of turning to Our Lady and asking for a cure is what made all the difference. Which brings me to the first point I want to talk about. How do we deal with losses in our life, with separation, rejections or goodbyes? My dear friends, we receive the strength to deal with losses only when we turn our gaze to heaven, where there is no loss, no separation, no goodbyes, and no death. In fact, Therese would call heaven the never-ending Sunday of the fatherland. My dear friends, it is the hope of heaven that puts all goodbyes in perspective and brings comfort in our loss. Now, our Therese was a temperamental child, extremely stubborn and known for throwing tantrums, and she was quite aware of her faults too. Very candidly, she would come and confess to her mother, Mama, I hate Celine, but I won't do it again. And off she would go. However, at a very young age, Therese also worked on herself to overcome the shortcomings. The incident I'm about to narrate is often known as the Christmas conversion. On Christmas Eve of 1886, as was the custom for French children, Therese left her shoes on the hearth in anticipation for gifts from the child Jesus. When she returned from the Mass, she heard her father tell Celine, well, fortunately, this will be the last year for this. Usually a statement like this and that too from her king, as she fondly called her father, would have broken her heart. Therese was a hypersensitive child and sometimes even stray comments like this would cause her to sob. However, this time something different happened. Therese decided to fight her tears and in that moment, grace was given. She pulled herself together, wiped her tears and unwrapped her gifts almost as if nothing had happened. Scripture reminds us that the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent 
take it by force. This violence, of course, is to self and not to the other. Therese, by learning to fight her tears and her hurt, was opening herself to grace. Recounting this incident, she would later write, In an instant, Jesus accomplished in me what I had not been able to do in 10 years. My dear friends, this openness to grace and recognizing the need for change is perhaps what helped Therese be healed of her tantrums and her fits of rage. Perhaps we too have weaknesses we've been struggling with for years. What God could do in Therese, surely He can do in our lives too, provided we be open to His grace. At this point, I would like to talk about the special role that her family played in her life. Louis and Zelie instilled in their daughter's life a deep love for Jesus. Poor as they were in terms of spiritual nourishment, they gave their daughters the best. My dear friends, families are the first places where children meet God. If your parents, let your children see you pray. If your kids and you feel you don't have a conducive environment for sainthood, well, pray for your parents. For every Monica who prays for her son's conversion, there are also Claire's who pray for their parents. About these saints, some other time. But my dear friends, what I'm trying to say is that no family is perfect. And perhaps in this lockdown, we've really been getting onto each other's nerves. But be patient with each other. Pray for each other. And let us try to make our families safe havens of love. Moving on, let's take a look at Therese's life at the convent. Therese was only 14 when she expressed her desire to join the religious life. But the church authorities, concerned that she was too young, asked her to return when she was 21. But a soul longing for the religious life seven years was too long a wait. Therese was willing to do everything possible to make the impossible happen. She met the bishop who, despite being charmed by her, did not give her permission. So when that didn't work, she went all the way to Rome to meet the Pope and begged him to let her join. So persistent was she that the papal guards had to actually carry this tearful girl out. But Pope Leo XIII's words stayed with her. Go, go, you will enter if God wills it. This historic meeting with the Pope was on 30th November, 1887. In Jan next year, the superior granted her permission. And finally, on 9th of April, 1888, an emotional, tearful, but determined Therese said goodbye to her family and home and entered religious life. She was all of 15 years and three months. It was here in the convent that Therese developed the little way. She knew with all her imperfections, she couldn't earn heaven. And so she looked for a little way, a way that is very straight, very short and totally new. And so she decided, I wanted to find an elevator that would raise me to Jesus. For I am too small to climb the stairway of perfection. And when she looked into the scriptures for her answer, she found it. Whoever is a little one, let him come to me. And at that moment, she received an insight. The arms of Jesus would be an elevator that would raise her up. And so she declared, I have no need to grow up, but rather I have to remain little and become this more and more. And so she simply abandoned herself into the hands of God. It was this confidence that gave her the faith that she would be in heaven after she died. Something that the other sisters in the community mistook for boastfulness. In fact, she even wrote, I considered that I was born for glory. But Therese trusted not in her merits, but in the grace of God. Therese's God was a big God who could stoop low enough to meet her in her littleness and then lift her up. Which causes us to wonder, how big is our God? There is a beautiful incident from the life of Therese that would bring those of us who struggle with distractions in prayer great hope. Often at prayer time, an elderly nun would make strange clacking noises in the chapel. We don't know for sure but probably the dear nun was toying with her rosary or struggling with her ill-fitting dentures. But the noise irritated Therese so much, she begged Jesus for help. This is when she decided to offer up the clacking noise as a rattle for the baby Jesus, a concert of sorts for him. Incidentally, this great saint also fell off to sleep very often while praying and she was embarrassed to drop off, especially when she was in the chapel. 
But here too, in her characteristic little way, she noted that if parents don't love their children any less when they are asleep, how can God love us less because we fall off to sleep? After all, He gives sleep to His beloved. So my dear friends, when we get distracted or restless in prayer, perhaps it is a good idea to pray those distractions, to make an offering of them to Jesus, just like Therese did. St. Therese's feast is on the 1st of October. And incidentally, October is also the mission month. In a sense, the church opens the mission month with the feast of this beautiful saint, who is incidentally also the patroness of mission. St. Francis Xavier, who traveled far and wide and even to our own country, is the other patron for mission. Now you might wonder what makes this young girl, who never left the cloister, a patron saint for mission. You see, St. Therese, through her prayers, is believed to have won as many souls for Jesus, if not more, as St. Francis Xavier did through his preaching. Which brings me to the last point of this session. Currently, you too may be in a cloister not of your choice, in a lockdown where movement is restricted. But you can be a blessing exactly where you are right now. You may be a child who cannot go out to play, or an elderly person who wants to take a walk out in the park, a working professional whose job has suddenly come to a standstill, a retired priest, a sick person in the hospital. No matter how useless your life seems to you at the moment, you are always of use to Jesus. So what can you do? Well, for starters, as St. Therese did, you can pray for the work of mission. Pray for those who are working in difficult circumstances for the gospel to be spread. Pray for the work of mission in the church. After all, my dear friends, Jesus needs us, every one of us, to bloom where we are planted. My dear friends, there is a lot in the life of St. Therese which we couldn't cover today. For instance, her devotion to the Holy Face, or the time when she prayed for a convict to change, or for that matter, how she got the name Little Fla. Please feel free to write your favorite incidents from the life of St. Therese in the comment section below. If you'd like to know more about her, it's best to read it in her own words from the story of a soul. And now let's take a quick recap of what we learned today. The first is, we deal with losses by turning our gaze to heaven. The second, our homes should be homes of prayer. And the third is, you can be a blessing exactly where you are. I would now like to take this opportunity to thank you, dear viewers, for the love and support that you have shown us in this ministry. If you like these videos, say a prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit, who can I bless with these videos? And forward it to them. You can be a missionary exactly where you are by spreading the gospel message in this simple way. If you'd like us to pray for you, please send us a WhatsApp message on the number given below. We assure you of our prayers. And now, may we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of St. Therese in our lives. We pray that you will grant us a conversion of heart, that we, through your grace, may overcome our weaknesses, make our homes homes of prayer. We also pray for those who are watching this video right now. You know their needs, Lord. We ask you to be their provider and their comforter. Have mercy on our world, Lord. We make this prayer through the sweet and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thank you, God bless you and see you next time.